So the texture maps in The Last of Us Part 1, I found a great resource from um, this chap called Matthew Trelevin Jones. I just want to cover these two images because they're very important. However, do check out his portfolio. I'll put a link in the description. He's got so many breakdowns of trims, wireframes, um, prop wireframes, data work, all on his art station. Um, so many awesome breakdowns like the trim pipeline, you know, how you make trims that fit props that have bevels. And it's one of the, if you want to see stuff that is done at the top level, the utmost top level, you're not going to get much better than a principal environment artist at Naughty Dog. So all sorts of stuff here is showing like what the door looks like without the trim. And then you add the trim. So watch this boom. And what happens when you add a trim with no, so all of it, all the before afters, the UV views, everything. Awesome. I want to focus on this because I feel this is important. So this is one, something you rarely see the sort of, uh, isolated view modes of texture maps. Now we can't see all of them because there is, you know, the, uh, the sort of vertical stripes, um, going down and cropping it. But from what we can see, there's some very important info. So we've got a wireframe and we've looked at wireframes enough times before to know that, okay, these edge loops are being used for vertex blends, consistency, and uh, the ability to have enough blends to sell the shapes as well. Anything that's curved has enough sort of edge loops in. And if it doesn't, it doesn't need that many. So it's been nicely optimized in that regard. However, this view, you never really get to see this view from professional work. It's amazing. These views are so helpful because you can see the isolated texture maps of the albedo and the roughness in this case. Um, this is the same as if you're in Unreal, you go to um, actually have Unreal open, funny enough. You know, this is the same as going to uh, your sort of view modes here and, you know, going to like base color and roughness. If you don't do that enough, I recommend you hotkey them and just get used to looking at these modes because they're super important behind the scenes. Okay. So firstly, what can we gather from, again, the highest quality environment art in the industry from Naughty Dog? How are their maps? So we have a look at some of the sticky notes. The first one, which is going to tie into a video I'm going to do in the future is albedo maps are nice and bright and not overly saturated. So we've got our base color maps here. There's nothing too dark. There's nothing uh, too oversaturated. Uh, the reason that we want to have bright albedos, and there's a science behind this in terms of the luminance of your textures, what not to go above, what not to go below, but also in the middle, there are various ranges. Wood should be a certain lum luminosity. Concrete should be a certain luminosity. I'm going to cover how you can check that stuff in another video. But what it means is, oh, more often than not, your albedo maps are bright because the brighter the albedos, the more energy is consumed. And well, if someone's really technical, they'll call me out on this, but uh, the more bright uh, your albedos, the more the light can bounce around. Really important for PBR because um, when you have an albedo that is too dark, when you have a dark level, you can't see anything. So you might have a daytime level and the albedo might work fine if it's dark, but the whole point of PBR is that the texture and the material, the shader, it should read well in all lighting scenarios. So the brighter the albedo, the more bounce, boom, 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 the light is going to go around. And you can test this very easily. Make a gray cube uh, in Unreal, light it, and then lift up the luminosity of the gray up and down and watch the light and the energy conservation move around. So um, that's why uh, it's actually quite a, a big issue um, in sort of when folks are learning, but also in studios, because usually lighting artists and material artists are the ones that know this. Uh, but once you reach certain specialisms, it can, you can see a lot more darker albedos. It's still something that uh, industry is getting used to in terms of what, how dark or how bright an albedo should be. And it is tied to some sort of technical data of how bright uh, this stuff should be based on luminance values. But there are great charts out there and uh, calibrations of what the recommended luminance values are. So as a lighting artist, especially, and a material artist, Every role this matters, but material and lighting artist, you should really know your uh, luminosity values for what a texture should be because uh, having dark albedos is rough. And it happens all the time, right? It's still something we're 
getting used to working in a PBR and a PBL uh, fashion. Uh, so you will spot that a lot um, when you work in a job and you can flag it and fix it and it's nice and easy. So um, that's the first one about albedos. The second one and the one that I really want to get into is roughness. Notice how roughness maps are bespoke made. They aren't just desaturation versions of the albedo. So if we look at where the 45 degree slice in relation to this uh, texture map view, so if we just look at the counter, there are stronger dirt streaks on this counter that aren't that noticeable in the albedo. They're very faded out. Equally, the marble lines are very, very faint and hardly noticeable. If we look up at the wood shelves, there is detail in the roughness, such as these little uh, scratches and high roughness values um, of white that are not in the albedo. Now, this is really important because a very bad habit to get into, which again happens a lot, the uh, people will take their albedo and they'll desaturate it and they'll just put a contrast sort of modifier on it in Unreal using the shader graph. That's not the best way to do it. Um, uh, in this piece here, if you actually go onto Matthew's art station, he states that he spent time making the roughness maps, which goes to show you that the roughness maps need to be uh, tailored um, separately from the albedo. Now, yes, you can probably use the albedo as a step one base, but there should be a lot more detail being added to the roughness, because the roughness is where you can go ham usually. Roughness is one of the most important texture maps. Roughness and albedo, super important. Now I, for me as a lighting artist, albedo slightly higher priority, but usually with a material or environment artist, you know, it's like, oh, a roughness, that's the most important. But both of those are really close, right? In the cam, really close in importance. They're the most two important ones. So um, the goal is that you want to make your roughness maps, put a lot of detail into them, also have stuff like your curvature, your edge wear, uh, these scratch masks. Um, you can be a little bit sneaky and put a tiny bit of curvature and ambient occlusion in, not too much, but just a tiny bit. And you want to test it with different lighting scenarios so that you can see the roughness reaction uh, on the wood. But if you look at the wood here, we've got all these little sort of um, splodges and stains, but they're not in the albedo at all. You can see the base wood grain in the albedo but uh, there's a lot more added into the roughness um, that we can see. Same here with the sort of grill sort of area. You know, there's a bespoke detail being added in there based on the material that is uh, happening. So yeah, these sort of roughness only views, um, my number one advice, and this is especially important for doing props. Um, doing props, doing hero props, anything like that, go out and guns go out and look at marmoset viewer or sketchfab uh, professional 3d models that look really good uh, if they're provided isolate the roughness and look at that roughness map so when i was uh, giving advice to weapon artists back in the day uh, you know i'd come across some weapon artists uh, through the mentoring at university um, they can model all fine it's usually the texturing where they fall down so one of the big things with weapons is the roughness um, so I would find these roughness maps and say, go look at these roughness maps, look at how successful they are in doing X and Y, look at your roughness maps, compare them. Do they look the same? So if I was working on a hyper-realistic game, I would take a view like this. Uh, I would look at what makes it successful. I'd look at the general noise level and detail. It's not cloudy. It's all specific details and sharp. It's got that juice and look at your roughness and compare them. So um, the more you can find of these isolated views, the better. And this is the highest tier you're going to find. Like, look, look at the little smudges of where like it's been wiped. You know, this is storytelling. It's what we call storytelling. So um, I'll put a link to that in the comments below. So the general rules of thumb here are roughness maps. Don't just desaturate the albedo. They need to be offered separately after the albedo using, may using the elements of the albedo, but adding new elements on top of it. Like in here, you've got the white for the grate, and you've got some of the faint detail of the dirt, and it's super enhanced. You want to test your roughness changes in a neutral lighting map. 
Something with neutral lighting so that when it goes into the game, it will work in any type of lighting. Don't tailor your roughness to a very moody set of lighting because it might affect what you do. This is why um, most people recommend to use Studio Tomato in um, uh, in Marmoset HDRI Studio Tomato because it's the most neutral one. If you get your stuff looking lovely with a neutral HDRI, it will work in lots of other color spaces. For the albedo, make sure the albedo has a uh, good brightness so that the lighting can bounce around much more. And uh, for the wireframe, we cover lots of wireframes, but keep it clean, keep it consistent, and then uh, you can add on from there. So that's the key message of today. Please do check out uh, the work on here. There's so much good stuff. Uh, it's gold standard, amazing, so inspiring. But yeah, that's the message for today. Uh, put care into the roughness, make sure the albedos aren't too dark, and we'll cover a bit more about albedos next time. For now, peace.